Hey everybody, Alex Kazor, SteelersDepot.com. Back to do another tape breakdown of the Steelers. Uh, week 5 loss, 26-23 in OT to the Baltimore Ravens. Steelers defense played great. Uh, it's really hard to criticize them too much considering all that they were dealing with. Uh, one thing I do want to look at today and one of the bigger criticisms, which really comes from a coaching scheme kind of personnel issue, which has happened before and I want to bring it to your guys' attention today because I thought it came at a critical moment late in this game. Um, just Keith Butler, an issue of trying to match personnel with scheme and trying to sub out, and it created some headaches late in this game that I don't want to say lost the game or allowed Baltimore to tie it up, but certainly played a factor in it. So this is the Ravens' last drive of the fourth quarter. Uh, this is the first and 10 on the Steelers' 44. Uh, again, 212 left down by a field goal. Steelers had started this whole drive in nickel, which was surprising because I thought they would go dime in an obvious pass situation, Baltimore trying to drive. Uh, a good chunk of the field to get in the field goal range so they start in nickel which i can live with that's fine you know i can live with that it's not the worst thing in the world so we'll look at the play here this place defended well i'm not the concern i have here is less with the players it's really not with the players at all as it is with some of the personnel and coaching decisions um made by Keith Butler and some of the substitutions. So this play here, we'll roll through it. Force check down the Mark Ingram. A little too much yak uh, after the play. Not crazy about that, but fine. Live with that. So we'll go to the next play. It's the very next play. Second and seven. Under two minutes to go. Ravens still in the same personnel grouping. What the Steelers now go into is dime. Now they're in dime, which was curious because I was fine with playing dime early in, in, in the drive when they were in their own territory, but now they're right in field goal range, and the Steelers are playing super passive and, su and playing pass. It's 156 left. The Ravens have two timeouts. I mean, you have a lot of time here to be able to run the football if you want, and you can check out the front here. I mean, there's no one in the box. they got two down linemen. you got Watt, Dupree. There's really Between the tackles, there's three guys. Minka's walking down late. But Bush is playing pass. They're all kind of playing like it is going to be a pass with their dime defense. You can see Cam Kelly coming in here for Vince Williams. So what does Baltimore do? Well, they're just going to take the easy money run the football because it's going to get them in the field goal range, make it a manageable third down situation. Um, and they're just it's the easy it's the easy money on this play. You see Bush backing off here. Uh, you get the double team blocks here by uh, the tackles and the guards and the center and the guard here. And it's a, a good game here for, for Mark Ingram. Actually, Hayward did a pretty nice job on, on Ronnie Stanley defeating this block. But uh, why go to dime now whenever they're driving? They have time. They can run the ball. If you start early in that drive and you want to go dime, I, I think that's a smart way to play it. As they start getting closer to field goal range, you probably want to go with bigger personnel, especially when the Ravens didn't change personnel. But okay, so that's the decision. So this sets up a third and one, which we'll see here in a second. I'll let this one run through. Again, you can just see they're playing pass. Bush backing off. Nice pickup. Good hole there from Mark Ingram. Sets up third and one. So now, obviously Baltimore can run the football. So now what Keith Butler wants to do, he wants to now put out his base defense, his base 3-4. And that starts getting chaotic because the Ravens are seeing the sub. And the Ravens never subbed here, so they don't have to wait for Steelers to be able to make changes. If your offense doesn't sub, you can snap it whenever you want. If you make a substitution, substitution uh, as an offense, then you have to, the refs will make you wait and kind of allow the defense a chance to sub uh, in kind. Not the case here. Ravens were in 11 personnel, same personnel grouping, and, and players the entire time. So now Butler's trying to trot out his base defense here. You got, you know, Vince Williams comes back on the field. You got your nose tackle. Hargrave on the field again, and they're trying to get lined up, and they're trying to get bodies on the field, and it's just not working. So they're trying to set this, and I think they're trying to run their over front here. I'm not quite sure, but what happens is, and what really matters here is there's no edge defender on this play when there should be. Somebody's got to have the edge here. Instead, because of the chaos, it's a read option play. You know, they take away the, the give here to Ingram, but no one has the edge. This is, again, a third and one play. And, uh, Lamar Jackson has the corner, picks up the first down. Now they're clear, clearly in field goal range again. Third and one here. Um, so it's that mixing and matching of personnel that you didn't have to do. Again, you started a nickel, which I didn't love. But then you go uh, to dime in a situation where Baltimore could certainly run the football. And then you try to rush your base defense on the field. And it's just chaotic, and you're not in position to win. So that was a frustration from Keith Butler's end. I thought overall the defense, again, played well. I thought Butler called a, a, a pretty good game overall. I think Feetner's obviously the coordinator who's gotten more criticism the last two weeks, which is fair and accurate, and I would agree with that. But it's these little things. I had a big issue with Butler doing this last year where he was going with, like, dime on the goal line against heavy personnel and just some weird mixing and matching. It used to be where you would just respond 
based off what personnel the offense was in. So if they were in 11 personnel, you were nickel. If they went heavy, then you went heavy. You know, I understand the way the league evolves and trying to get matchups, and, you know, you can Steelers can go more nickel against heavier because you have someone like Mike Hilton who's almost like a linebacker of the way that he plays. But the, the cons to this, that idea, is you get some of this chaos sometimes when you're trying to match and, and run substitutions out there. And again, I mean, you look at it here. I just want to run through this one more time and highlight it. There's no one set. No one's prepared on third and one with the Ravens right there on field goal range late in the game. The biggest play of the game so far. And you got everybody standing up and trying to communicate and get set. And there's no edge defender. And it's an easy first down for Baltimore. And that's really heartbreaking. Because if you get a stop here, obviously Justin Tucker has a big leg. But this would be, this is on the 40. Or excuse me, the 35. They just, of course, they change it now. So that would be, what, a 52-yarder to the open end of Heinz Field. Now again... Tucker's got a big leg. Good chance he makes it. Maybe he doesn't. I think it's a lot more interesting. Ends up being, I forget what the exact yardage was uh, when Tucker kicked the uh, game time field goal. We can check that briefly here, actually. Um, it wasn't 52 yards, though. I'll tell you that much. It ended up being a 48 yarder, which, I mean, four yards is four yards. I mean, that's, you know, fairly significant. And plus, if you get the stop here, then you get the ball back with some more time. And, and maybe you can. Try to get a late drive there as well. So I just didn't love kind of how Butler called things on the final drive. Again, I'm not really trying to blame the players for this. I just think overall got a little too cute at the end. Started poorly by starting out in nickel then trying to go dime. Once Baltimore got in the running range and kind of on the ed edge of field goal range, Baltimore ran the ball to pick up uh, a couple easy yards to get themselves in third and short. Butler tried to sub again, rushed everything out there. Baltimore went tempo. Steelers weren't set, gave up a first down led to the game time field goal so again obviously overall the offense has more problems the defense has played well uh they're, they're the strength of this team there's no denying that but excuse me uh almost made the end of the video with having to clear my throat but you know this was a big issue at the end of the game which i just don't think is acceptable and i think it really hurts the team's chances to try to be able to get that third down stop and potentially uh cause tucker to miss uh the game time field goal in the fourth quarter or give the offense time to have uh one last drive so just wanted to point that out one thing that i saw one thing i didn't like uh, probably going to go unnoticed as these things often do with personnel groupings but uh one area this team still could clean up still work to do offense defense and of course special teams a lot of work needs to be done there but uh, let me know your thoughts on the video whether you're watching on youtube follow me on twitter at alex underscore or following steelersdepot.com thank you guys so much for listening and we'll talk to you soon